Hi, Team Noodle. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is my third presentation, and thanks for allowing me uh, the opportunity to share our Moodle evolution. Okay, so before we start, uh, can everyone remember what I felt a 21st century building teacher looks like? Does everyone may have seen the presentation a few years ago? No? Yes, some? Uh, future building teacher embracing technology. You can see I was sort of jumping out of my skin with the pop goggles and the selfie stick, quite excited. Then uh, maybe a year later, over time, more like a technological overload, sort of just a bit inundated with it. And then now, over an extended amount of time, I call it compliance bullying, actually. Is it me, or does everyone feel like it's, they're actually scared to teach? But that's another discussion, okay? So let's recap, and apologies for those that know this. We are currently delivering Certificate 4 in Building Studies, and the course is a pathway that assists in obtaining a builder's licence. But we have now grown throughout the south region of New South Wales, so no, not just the Illawarra. We've actually taken away the Illawarra logo, and we've incorporated the boost thing. I can't believe how hard it was to get them to change that, and then I just spoke to an IT girl, and she said, just change the boost thing, bro. Well, all right, okay. Okay, so our delivery is blended, so you can stay online, face-to-face, -face, come to class, stay at home, watch on your phone, watch the recordings, and it's flexible. But stay engaged, or else it's too fast-track otherwise. We encourage active learning. Moodle is our LMS. Adobe is our classroom. We deliver Monday, Tuesday and Thursday nights and we record every session. We've now broken the recordings up so the students can watch what they need. So it used to be uh, one full hour or two full hours, but now we're starting to break them up. But has anyone done that, how hard it is to actually stop the recording, start the recording, stop the recording in Adobe? Anyway, we're slowly getting better with it. Uh, we deliver builder focus, so we changed it, we, we set it up so it shows the, the pathway of a builder rather than following the training packages and the unit codes. We still comply, but we hide those as best we can. So if you can see, we've got like the builder's preparation package, the pre-build package, which is before, so you, you, you measure and sign a contract, and then the actual, I'll just go back, the actual builder's build package. We, we do it that way, and we still comply, but we try and hide the... Um, the unit codes and the training package. And you can see, like, that's one cluster that we deliver. I actually don't like it. We prefer just to have it nice and simple. And I think that's probably better for the students. So here is a reflection of our growth. So in 2014, before our changes, so at Illawarra, Wollongong, we had uh, 26 students in the Wollongong over two years, six subjects per semester. Uh, we had 12 complete, we had a 46% completion rate. Okay, so we made our changes in 2015 when I first did the talk here in Melbourne and we had 50 in Wollongong. One year we did it, we fast-tracked it, mainly for carpentry students. 40 weeks, nine clusters to suit the students rather than the teachers. It actually worked quite well. And we had 50 started with 37 complete. So that was a really successful year, so 74% sort of completion rate. We had... Um, 2016, 2017, I'll combine these because we, we increased to around 80 students and that was throughout the uh, Illawarra. We had about, and that's in those years, about 65 complete throughout, that included Wollongong, Nara, so we all worked together, Nara, Cooma, Goulburn, uh, and, and down Beagle, we had a couple of students down there. So we got 75% uh, completion rate, which was quite a successful year. In 2018, we had uh, Miller jump on board. So, firstly, Wollongong, we had 58. Nara, 14. Goulburn, 2. Maria, 4. Now, our friends up at Sydney joined forces with us, so we had 25 there. So, we got up to 103, all the teachers working together with uh, 87 completion. So, we had a really good year, 84% completion rate. And then now this year, We've grown again with the South Region. Wollongong 67, Nara 14, Goulburn, Maria, 
Miller's joined, stayed with us, a bit less in numbers, but Griffith and Wagger have joined forces with us. So now we've all sort of tried to come together. The thing is, though, we're, we're expecting about 80% completions, but it's getting so big, myself and Glenno, we, we can't do it on our own, so we need building teachers. So we want you. <laughs> all right? This is, I don't know if anyone's seen Glenn. Glenn's my offside. I love him to bits. Uh, we need you building teachers with thorough knowledge to teach the subject uh, and require exceptional IT skills of LMS, Moodle and other applications. We, need, we pretty much need VET professionals. So I've just got a video and I'm going to show you the depth required, and you probably already know this, for IT skills just to like set up the classroom. This is solely setting up, this has got nothing to do with a uh, building or teaching building at all. So it's just solely setting up the classroom. Trying to do something. All right, I'll do it now. Give me three minutes, boys. So log in, Glenna. Turn that on. Turn on the uh, lapel. Turn on the comms box. Connection. Webcam. Come in, boys. How's it going? What's that? Good. Your glands back. I am. Log in, Moodle. Mate, good. I've missed it. <coughs> Log in. Log in, Adobe Connect. Set up the screen for Moodle on that side, which will be on that screen for the students face to face. That's the students face to face, that'll be for the students online. Accept all the students coming into the room because it's blocked. We have to set up um, so we know who's coming in. So we block, you can see we block guest access. And then turn on the webcam. So webcams, which is the best webcam you've probably ever seen in your life. Then we go to the lesson. That's so officially that, certified now. That's a certified webcam, that's it. So we get set up to talk about the assessment requirements, so assessments, tasks, the night, and tonight is lesson to report on. So that's getting ready. We turn edit settings on. We turn editing on. <coughs> I usually open up the attendance choice to start. So the students can do it at 5 30. Share screen. Select monitor. It always minimizes. Turn it back on. So students can see Moodle through the classroom. We've so far got four students. We've got another 20 minutes before we start. Put the headset in. So Adrian from Wagga's online at the moment. I'm using the headset now because the lapel's not working too good. Adrian, can you hear us all right? Anyone hear us online? <laughs> Four, <right? laughs> I was like, I don't want to ruin the video, and then he tripped. It's all right. No, that's good. Shows realism. It does show a bit of realism. Yeah, he can hear. Okay, and that's it. So now the classroom's ready to go. Thanks, Ben. I wanted to show a bit of humour, and then we just did it first take, and he tripped over. I said, mate, I've got to put that one in. We always do encourage one take with our videos. And you know, so I suppose from that, can everyone understand uh, this is another skill and very hard to find people passionate to learn 
to learn it than rather than actually do it. So just take into account like Moodle, like what you need to uh, understand and how it works. You know, your URLs, your quizzes, doing your forums, your advanced marking guide. It's like another trade on its own, isn't it? So it's really hard to find those people, you know, and we've got to be de teaching building. So what we did was we said, we felt that we uh, needed young, innovative young teachers to deliver the course, really, really vibrant guys. And what we did is we found these guys, Glenno, 65 years young, never checks his emails, Adrian, computers bore him, 60 years young, and Frank, 55 years young, he thought Adobe was a mud brick house. <laughs> so how are we going to deliver this model with our young innovative teachers? So pretty much we just said we'd plan everything, you know, constant meetings, uh, one, deliver te uh, one teacher delivers whilst others assess, view, we check learning analytics quite often, that's become really big, activities and all are designated into separate groups. So we've sort of split everyone up to work together and it seems to be working. And would you believe over the past six months there's been a bit of a shift. So Glenno has got his own YouTube channel. <laughs> Adrian has now become the Moodle champion within the Riverina region. And uh, Frank, the, the baby of the group, he thinks assessing through Moodle Advanced Marking Guide is the greatest thing since I suppose Moodle. So how do we get our teachers to learn and use Moodle effectively and teach the blended learning concept? So I've always said um, two top tips. Every time you talk to uh, teachers about Moodle, I say go to edit settings, it's always there, go to edit settings. We always embrace that or, or, or push them to go edit settings and then also create videos. And I said, you know, one, one copy, I don't care, just get it up so the students can watch it. So here's an example of our, one of our typical lessons, blended learning lesson. Uh, you can see, I use building classes because it's a really good subject to sort of discuss. We have our learning material, our, our PowerPoint presentation, our building class uh, video, um, some snapshot assistance pages to assist, and then we like have an uh, activity to finish off. So can you remember our first top tip? I was just like edit settings. So the, pre sorry, the preparation time is the hardest because during delivery, if you make one mistake in the online space, it's sort of magnified by 100 times. So whenever the teacher asks how to do something, I pretty much say edit settings and make sure you're prepared. Because for guys to learn to set that up, 20 minutes is three to four hours of preparation easily, I found. Our other top tip was create videos, upload for viewing, minimize wasting time, no more than three minutes, get to the point and upload your recording. So since I've been delivering uh, the course, uh, Wollongong Chippy was a YouTube channel that we started and uh, we've sort of grown. The, my videos are a little bit ad hoc, I just throw them up. So we actually use Build Some, which if anyone's interested in building, they're a bit more to the point. Um, they're through Google SketchUp and they're really formal. So our students really use those quite a lot. I have a video, I've got three minutes and then maybe one minute, I'm pushing my time. Um, setting up, okay, I'll do this quickly. There's a, a video that we've used setting up on automatic level and um, it's with our guys using the pop goals. It's a bit older, but they like using it. Um, the students like watching it all over. I've got one more after this. So when you're setting up the tripod, you've got to make sure that you get that as close to the level as you possibly can get before you go too far. You also need to get the feet and push them down into the ground so it doesn't move on you. Yep. <laughs> so stop asking stupid questions and you'll be right. <laughs> all right. Once you put it in and you know it's close to level, or I don't want to see them out of level, they've got to be as close to level as you can possibly get. Once you get them level, you need to go and grab your dumpy and set that up. <laughs> Once you've got your automatic level of dumpy, Screw it on top of the tripod. You want to try and get the triangle on the base of the dumpy on the triangle at the same as well. All right, so try and get those to line up. You don't want to turn around if you can't, if you don't have to. When you're looking at the mirror, when you go to set it up, you need this part of the dumpy parallel with two of these. When you get them parallel, you can see the bubble in the middle. Whichever way my left thumb goes is the way that the bubble's going to move. So I'm going to use two thumbs in. Sorry, everyone, I'm going, to, I'm going to move ahead. 
Does everyone get the point where we're going with these pop goggles? Yeah, I've got 20 seconds. So finally, and it's the last one, what does the future hold for us, uh, this style of delivery and the use of Moodle? So we really need teachers, assessors, learning designers, learning analytics experts, Moodle champions, and our growth will expand. So we're hoping to you know, not only go there, but go towards Sydney, Armadale and North Region, maybe hopefully Melbourne. And we need to thank Team Moodle for enabling us to do this. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Is that one second left? <laughs> All right, okay. Yes. Go for it. Thank you. Um, good presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, now, I, I've done a bit of this stuff previously, and um, the experience of the people who are on the other end, the streaming participants, effectively coming into your classes, how do you make sure that they feel like they're actually part of the class? Because the feedback we got when we did it was they just felt like they were eavesdropping on a class rather than being part of the class. We have teachers in each location. Okay. And we allocate, say, 20, 20 students per teacher and say you need to stay in contact. And we also make the students, we have nine clusters and we, make the, we still make the students come in at times. So we still incorporate a, bit of, a lot of face-to-face. -face. I've actually pushed it more this year, face-to-face, -face, where they're actually coming in each cl cluster and they, they have to actually come in. Because we found that some are like sneaking around and you could watch their learning analytics that they're just sort of trying to tick the boxes to get through. Um, just in terms of assessments, do you also use Moodle for practical assessments or uh, yeah. because that's like running through the ask for approved checklists is the problem we're having at TAFSA? Yeah, well, we did, uh, one of the presentations I did before, we did a WHS assessment and the students went out on site and took a video of them controlling a hazard and implementing control measures to make sure that they were safe. So we actually did quite a lot of them. We did a fire safety so like a fire audit for the building codes and they did a video of a um, class one house or a commercial property and they did an audit and it was a video. Yeah. One more? Yeah, you don't have to answer that. No, no more, all right. <laughs> but thank please, you everyone. Please help me, uh, please join me in, in a warm round of applause. Thank you very much.